All right, I'll bring this uh, meeting to, to order for October the 15th, 2019. <clears throat> Result of the agenda for the October 15th, 2019 regular meeting of council be approved. Moved by Councillor Wentoni, seconded by Councillor. What's your name again? Delorier? All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> Resolved that the minutes of the October 1st, 2019 regular council meeting and the October 8th special committee of the whole strategic planning session meetings be received and approved. Moved by Councillor Tony, second by Councillor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Okay, moving on to 4, 4.1, we have delegation. Ms. Wojcik tonight, Tracy Wojcik and her. Yang, so move forward and you can introduce yourselves and we just stand here. It, however you're comfortable. Or you want to just we can sit here and talk? If you okay. want, if you're comfortable well, there, that's fine, yeah. We're going to hand out so you guys have a visual of what we're proposing. Okay, thank you. So we did a little sketch. Uh, what we're proposing for a session slash storage area uh, at the current Eden Park. Um, we can hand these around to you. We took some photos and actually Hugh hunted marked out. Uh, it's, we're looking at a 24 by 24 uh, concession slash storage unit, and we're looking to place it directly kind of to the north of where the existing kind of garage thing is that we use. So it's kind of mapped out in that photo there, so you can kind of visualize where we're thinking of placing it. We would have to move one spruce tree, which Hugh said would be a problem. We could take it and put it somewhere else. It's just a small one. Um, we have already gotten uh, donated, if the project were to go through, uh, we have a grill, a double fryer, and a hood range for the uh, kitchen area. We have, I believe in the CEO's uh, package, we kind of put our little cheat sheet notes of what we're kind of presenting to you there. Um, groups that would benefit from this would be, we have an A-team Slowpitch League, potentially. I know they have a tournament and a game down there. Minor Baseball had 63 registrants last year and Swan Valley Youth Baseball had 60 registrants. We are currently um, bidding on the 2020 provincials for 13 under for the July 10th to 11th or 10th to 12th weekend and that apparently will be um, awarded beginning of December. Um, other potential benefits would be to the use of this concession for the Canada Day celebration that the town puts on. Um, we also were talking about the fun run that went on and like miscellaneous sporting events if somebody wanted to put anything on, as well as school tabloid days if they wanted to go down there and do something down there where they could have an actual concession and, and maybe do a little fundraiser or whatever. And then the other thing we were just talking about was how you have your uh, burger fundraising events that you have all across town and you could potentially use that facility to go Ampy parking down there, seating, nice afternoon, you can go and do your burgers, trees down there. Um, not on this design is um, an additional overhang in front of the concession for kind of a covered seating. Um, and then the other thing we were thinking we could move the existing ball diamond facility maintenance supplies to the more secure garage storage where we currently work out of. Um, the other possibilities, if this were to go forward, uh, you could potentially host movie nights in the park, uh, music festivals in the park, um, the nursery school I know has the light on if they wanted to add that to their thing. We um, are here to get your backing first and foremost before we kind of proceed any further with it. We just wanted to kind of give you a visual um, what we'd be uh, doing would be applying for grant applications, doing some fundraising on our own, um, and then, would you like to speak to this part? <laughs> no, you're not here. Uh, potentially leave the town for some financial backing, potentially to um, assist us with this. Now, I have a listing of potential contributors that we'd be seeking funding from on, on the little cheat sheet we have there. And it's like the same ones that you would normally spend Valley Community Foundation, they have the 150 grant, um, which I understand is a $40,000 grant, which is matched contributions. So 
that might be something we'd be looking to the town to maybe help us match, depending on how the other fundraising went. It, it could be to a maximum of, I think the overall, kind of from the hip number that we've got is approximately 65,000. That would be with a concrete base. And then we match up to the existing structure that's there, metal siding, metal um, roofing, so low maintenance, LED lighting, um, as far as that went. The other thing our group would like to do is kind of complete some outstanding projects. The one thing would be the 2012 Manitoba Games Podium. So along with, if this were to go forward, we would also secure the funding or donations to complete that podium. So it's sheeted in in the front there on the one side because it hasn't got done since 2012. So we'd like to finish that. Put the podium down there. It was built for the 2012 Manitoba Games. The stage. Yeah. The stage. Oh, the stage. Yeah, the stage area. So we'd like to finish that. And then also the uh, batting cage, they uh, originally had invested about $5,000 in the batting cage at Portland Minish, and they need another 25 to three to kind of finalize that for uh, security wrap chain link security wrap. So we'd also like to just complete that project to be incorporated in the grant applications that we're looking to apply for should we get the backing from the town to proceed. And then I guess the future expenditures for the town would be responsibility for hydro insurance and maintenance. Um, obviously, we'd be building it with as low maintenance as possible. LED lighting, so hydro would be as less as possible. Um, the other thing, there's, I don't think the hydro's going to go up that much because we'd just be moving the existing refrigerator and freezer from one unit into the new unit, so there'd be like lighting left in the old one and then the new one. So I don't foresee hydro being a huge, huge increase. <coughs> it so far? Any questions? Okay, so uh, any members of council that want to comment or ask any question? Councilman Tony. So just to go over your numbers just a little bit, this is boy check, 65,000 total project. Does that include the batting cage and the stage front that you've talked about? Um, 65, no. To do the batting cage, we'd have to add that other three on there. It'd be 68. And then as far as the I guess the finishing for the podium for the stage area, that was something I was going to um, potentially reach out to LP for to see if that's, it wouldn't be much, five, six sheets or something. To, and then when our construction's there working on it, we would just zip it up and put it up. Okay, and now you, you just talked about the Manitoba 150 grant. That is only a $40,000 grant. Um, are you looking at fundraising in order for that grant to work it's a match so it's forty thousand from the grant if you were to be qualifying then forty thousand dollars matching that's i'm assuming that's what you're coming to here to us today is to see if we would be willing to yeah, contribute exactly. something to that forty thousand dollars is that what your thoughts yeah, are that's what like we obviously would pursue other, like our sponsor, the Kinsman Club, the Lions Club, all those different service groups that are in the community and, you know, put this project out to them and see what they would be willing to support it with. And then kind of go from there. So at a max, it would be, say, if we applied for $35,000 of the Manitoba 150 grant, we potentially say to the town sponsor, could you, could you match the 35 for us? But then whatever else we would secure otherwise would obviously bring down that match for the town or for the community. And just one more point on that one, the Manitoba, the 150 grant, the deadline for applications is November 12th. Um, do you think that you would have something in place um, to go ahead with that grant? Um, it, it, knowing that it's a, a very tight window and what if the town what if we aren't able to con contribute the whole thirty-five thousand? would you not go ahead with that grant i don't know when that grant is actually the decision is made on it i'm sure we could 
once we have to go ahead, we can get on with pursuing all these other angles and have a better idea. But you just don't want to go ahead and start all this and then be like, oh no, the town's not backing it, so it was kind of a waste of time to do all that. So if we get your go ahead, then we can hit the ground running and contact all these other ones and then report back to you with any information that we have in the, in the meantime okay. prior to that. So just reminding you that that deadline is the 12th of November. Mm -hmm. That's all the other questions. Thank you. Councillor Friesa and Councillor Dore. The stage, does it not belong to the kinsmen? And did they not tell us last year, yeah, we're going to get it finished? I don't, yeah, I think it does belong to the kinsmen. So we can contact them and, and get them to do it. Then, to then you don't have to. Yeah, yeah. potentially, yeah. We're going to get some money from the kinsmen to finish that. Yeah. As well at the same time. Yeah. Whatever, whatever works, it saves you looking for another three thousand dollars because they did say that they were going to have it done last year, and it's obviously not. And one other question: uh, Does it, will the town still have control over the new one as to who rents it? Exactly how the existing structure would work. That would be how they would want it to continue to work. It was just. We would kind of look after most of the capital portion of it. The only thing would be for, I, I don't know if the Small Valley Baseball, for sure, do they get charged a rental fee for that? For the existing, right now, they pay, do you pay a rental fee when we use the concession? I don't know. I know you do the diamonds, but I don't know what the concession right. Yeah. I know we know July 1st, but it's always been that way. Yeah. It's usually only yeah. Day, so you used to be looking for it to go. So it's not us. Yeah. Now just have the structure to kind of kind of like a legacy project. The other thing they're thinking about was uh, like potentially going down like in honorary Avenue as well. You know, to maybe honor the likes of say Ray Atkinson or there was Mr. Parsons who was big into baseball. There was uh, Mr. Grass as well. I think it's not really don't know all the religions back but that's another avenue we could potentially look at so, oh yeah councilor glory and then councilor Tony. well I, I think it's a good idea and i haven't worked in that concession before i know it's not ideal the way it is now so i think this is a step in the right direction i see you've, you've mentioned using so they've you've spoken with our rec department and they're they seem, seem to be on board but i guess the question more so for mr crow is since patty does she have any opinion one way or another on this project or is she as far as the rec department have they i guess maybe you could speak with her and get some feedback as far as uh, what their thoughts are on it but as far as i can tell it seems like a like a good idea and i'm anything that comes forward from the community is a good idea if the community wants it it's their park we just spoke in general terms because uh, we really didn't know what the ask was going to be okay. <clears throat> to let you breathe a sigh of relief, I was I misspoke on the deadline. The November twelfth deadline is for the celebration one fifty uh -huh. part. So you do have some time. I think it's February that the cutoff yeah. is is for the project. Yeah, right? similar. So, so similar to the. Um, uh, then that makes it easier. <laughs> the community foundation spring grant or fall grant mm -hmm. spring grant spring fall grant is the same time so if you are applying make sure that you i suggest that you apply for both and then check off the 150 side as well okay good good Councilor gray i just want to clarify something um council councillor friesen suggested that the Kidsman thing was three thousand dollars. I thought that was just the the, the batting cage. The, batting yeah. cage. The, the other one was. Six we don't really have a monetary. Event. It would be fairly. A few hundred dollars. Yeah. Um, the cost of sixty-five thousand dollars. I may have missed a review, but I thought that was for the base structure, and then the siding and roofing was not included in that. Is what that I understood you say. So it's forty-five thousand for labor and material, um, concrete, pad. Um, exterior finish and the interior finish so that would be another ten thousand for the concrete pad like and this is just rough numbers until we got the go-ahead somebody just kind of gave it to us so we'd have something to present to you um and then plumbing um has roughed in at five thousand um, dollars you need to know if it's natural gas 
Yeah, and I believe it's going to be electrical. Like, we wouldn't be putting any natural gas there. There's current um, electrical there. Um, and electrical, we kind of uh, jotted in and around the same as the plumbing for now. Um, we could decrease it by seven to ten thousand dollars if we put in a wood subfloor and didn't do the concrete, but then that's going to potentially expense and maintenance for the town for in the future. So I'd rather try and, and get that concrete base in and, and no worries or headaches in the future potentially. Um, I did contact, I left a message for Derek because uh, I was speaking with one of the public works individuals to see if it's a potential for us to um, hook into the existing drain system that's at the other unit right there beside. And I was waiting to get a call back on them to see if there's the greater slope that we could get into there. Um, so that potentially could be anywhere from 1000 to $3,000 if we had to dig out to the main drain, apparently, just to give you an idea about that. Um, and then I don't think the electrical, as long as we can tie in, you're okay with us tying into the electricity main rocks to the other building right there. And I was out here in four. It was the forty-five thousand dollars then, the sixty-five? Did that include the roofing and the cladding? I thought that that was yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so, other than the whatever is gotten from the Canada one hundred and fifty and the local service clubs, the remainder <coughs> of the expectations town council cover that. Yeah, and we do fundraising as well. Okay. Okay. The question that I mean, I think self evidently people want the project. The issue is um, how many projects we can afford to fund. It's a, it, we can't make a decision on this funding until we do the through the budgeting process. Right. Mm -hmm. Is there any further questions? <clears throat> okay, and the council grace said that you know we, we still we'd have to discuss this. You know, obviously we have to just start looking at what budget looks like in 2020. Um, but definitely because of your deadline, it does buy us a little bit of time. As far as the Manitoba 150 uh, granting goes, you know, some of the footwork that has to be done. But council will definitely have to discuss this and uh, and see where we can go with this if we can potentially provide any dollars for it, but that's something that we would have to discuss, mm -hmm. obviously, when we start looking at what we're spending for 2020. So we can't, unfortunately, we can't give you an answer tonight. No, I don't think you're expecting that, but definitely we'll be talking about it and we'll be, we'll be close to you to let you know where things are going. Okay. Just one more. Okay, go ahead. And just to, um, uh, I think that it would be good for us as council to see some numbers for you moving forward in terms of what you're, what you are expecting from potentially the 150 grant as well as the community foundations grant, and what your goals are for fundraising um, might give us a better picture of what dollar amount you're looking for to to finish off or help with the project as well. Like. I would say max would be the thirty thousand range, like with decreases, obviously from. I don't even think it would be that much, frankly. I'm thinking it might be in that ten thousand dollar range by the time we're done securing all other fundraising to give you kind of an idea. But at the max, it might be thirty thousand dollars if we can't secure any other funding, which I don't think is going to be the case. But I think it's kind of two questions. One question, are you supportive of us going ahead with this at no cost? Um, without knowing, like, do we have, if we raised all the capital and gave you the building to maintain, would you be okay with that? That would be one, like, because we can't really go forward with looking for funding if we don't even know we have the permission to put it where we want to. So that's kind of the first part of it. And then the second part is how much will the town support? for funding for the project. Does that make it easier? Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it like does. Like, kind of split it into two different, mm -hmm. 
because we have to go ahead and get, yes, you're going to support us. We don't know what to what monetary extent, but you'll support the project if we come to you with it all paid for. You know, then we can start securing our additional funding through our other service groups and, and put that out to them. And we can have more of a base of exactly what, what the costs are and what we need to have and how to get that funding. And a lot of the grants that we're looking at are 50-50 grants. So, and I'm sure that there are recreation 50-50 grants that are out there as well that aren't maybe accessible to us, but are accessible to the direct committee to do that. So if they would work with us on that, then that would be something we could look at. Yeah, I agree. And, and you know, Councillor Gloria said that obviously when we have the residents and out there trying to fundraise or put something together like this from the grassroots, naturally we'd like to support that. And, and if all the money came as far as the capital and everything else to build it, that's a great thing. I don't think, I wouldn't stand in the way of that, but when it comes down to any additional dollars that are gonna come from the municipality, then that's something that we'd have to seriously look at. Mm -hmm. Having said that, I would propose a resolution to this council that we would support um, the the uh, proposed concession in terms of maintenance and um, um, hydro and maintenance of this facility at this time, and then further look at numbers presented by the committee for for a future future discussion. We'll add that to resolutions, or do you want to do that right now? A little further down. Okay. All right. Anything else? Okay. Well, thank you very much, Angela. That's the least I've ever seen you speak. So, uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for coming out. Thanks, Rob. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Great idea. Great idea. Okay, we want the communications in 6.1. Resolved that the letter from the Minister of Municipal Relations dated October the 4th, 2019, regarding 2019 municipal operating grants be received as information. Moved by Councillor Mantoni, second by Councillor Friesen. See the letter there from the Minister. <clears throat> Any discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Result of the building permits 7719 through 7919 with a total estimated value of 62500 be received. Moved by Councillor Gray, second by Councillor Wintoni. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 7.1. <clears throat> Result of the Superintendent of Works report be received. Moved by Councillor Gray, second by Councillor Lentoni. Discussion? Yeah. Councillor Delorean. At the very bottom, there's a, in the other, uh, you may not be able to answer this, Mr. Cole, but uh, what, what what does that mean, the private water source for municipal water? What, I'm just going to. see it there but I think that that might be for water source for the uh, shed. Um, Mr. Cool had mentioned that to me um, when we came back from the G5 um, that there's a local business that's interested or floating the idea that they will supply the water to the municipality and they purchased the water from us as a wholesale and then they turn around and sell it back to our end. Say that again. Sorry, say so, that again. So, so the company would buy the water from us and then they would sell it to the municipality. Can I suggest, yes, can I suggest because this may impact our already existing agreement with the 
are and that we refer that discussion to the in-camera session. It obviously has significant impact on partners um, and it's not something that really we would want to have public debate on before you make a decision. So I'm going to just suggest we defer that to the in-camera portion because there is, we, as you will recall, there is some discussion that we had about what our plans are with respect to the agreement, with respect to water purchase with the municipality. Okay, fair enough. Because that's what I assume it is. Any other discussion? All in favor? Let's carry. <clears throat> so, 721 resolved that the Swan River Protected Services report for September 2019 be received as information. Moved by Councillor Lintoni, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> 722. Resolved in September 2019, Swan River Handy. Can we come back to that? Do we have a, a, a process in place now for um, adjudication of, of uh, infractions? I didn't know that we passed that. I, 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 I know sometimes <clears throat> I'm slow to say, but. No, we don't. Okay. Um, uh, Darren. Talk to me about it today and said it will be coming, coming up anytime. It's just that we have these violations in the Okay, good. Okay. Uh, 722 resolved that the September 2019 Swan River Handy Transit Ban Report be received as information. Moved by Councillor Gray, second by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <coughs> 7.3, Councillor's report. We'll start with Councillor Lentoni. On the spot. Um, G5, we had our G5 meeting in Durban, and i um, got to say it was a little bit more, it was better than the previous ones that I have admitted. <laughs> um, still would like to see more structure to the G5, but it was definitely better than the in terms of discussion and having a discussion than the last one I attended. Um, other than that, I don't think I have anything else to report that I can recall at this time. Thank you. Councillor Morgan. Um, one thing I had um, was the, again, the G5 uh, meeting last Monday in Durban. Um, as Councillor Tony said, it was uh, a little bit more interesting than some of the previous ones. There was some lively debate on some issues um, that were to be brought back uh, for discussion to uh, each council. And it was good to see that there was already um, some representations from a couple of our local um, or neighboring indigenous communities um, that were there to observe um, the meeting. So, mm -hmm. so uh, okay. Councilor Friesen. Um, Communities of Care had their meeting on the 2nd of October at 5 o'clock, and one of the main subjects, of course, was Spooktoberfest, which is this weekend. So if you've got kids, take them out to the museum. Um, we had a strategic planning meeting that same night at 6.15, went well. I uh, went to the Friendship Centre on the 5th for their uh, salute to uh, missing and murdered Indigenous girls and women. They had a lunch and then a parade uptown and back. Uh, Communities in Blue had a meeting at the Harley House on the 7th and we discussed uh, some stuff and they would like to actually come and see us in regards to special plans for next year to help celebrate Manitoba 150 if we could do something special communities in bloom wise and I believe they're going to try and come at one of our community 
and the whole meeting. Um, I enjoyed the G5. It was very much more interesting than the previous one. Some good stuff. Supper was delicious. And I went to the Manitoba 150 meeting at the Westwood on October the 7th. And I believe Councillor Tony is going to mention more of it when we get going. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Gray. Um, the grand opening of settlement services <coughs> was uh, just over two weeks ago, I guess. Um, just before the last one. So, um, And we have an upcoming board meeting. For them, for NQB and Thompson, for that. So, if somebody else wants to go and carry the torch, that would be helpful. What's the date of that? Uh, I'll get it for you later. I think it's the Tuesday, I think it's the 22nd of October. Okay. Um, the Recreation um, Commission is going to be on the session, so there's not much more. It's been the priority of my uh, time. And the only other thing, just as a matter of course, we have a process for for delegations, which includes putting some material in advance and public material, including things. I, and I know Mr. Groves is new, but but I'd like us to go back to getting all of, getting group to give us the material in advance so that we can frame that discussion. So other than that. I, don't know why. I, I want to apologize for missing D5. I, I uh, was going to go uh, to like the rise meeting, but I have I had other uh, client commitments in Winnipeg that started at 8 o'clock the next morning. And I thought if I went to G5 and then drove through the night, there was a time when I've done that, and I've done it even in this council, but I've, uh, I've come to the view that that is not something that I can do at my age anymore. I used to do it all the time, but I can't do it anymore. And so I'm not going to. Most people should. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I, I, I don't know I can't. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Councilor Delorier. Mm -hmm. Councilor Report. Okay, you're not going to take up anything for Councilor White at all, so. <clears throat> I went to half the G5 meeting. <laughs> okay. Did you want to uh, yeah. go back? I've got a couple things okay. that triggered my thought. Uh, we just had a protective services meeting, committee meeting as well, with uh, most of most well councillor white councillor morio and your worship um, just getting some more information in regards to policing services in our community as well i had the opportunity to be a part of the manitoba 150 granting um, meeting that we had at the westwood last <laughs> last date i can terrible with dates i can't remember the date um, anyway we did discuss all three granting options, the Manitoba 150 Celebration, Manitoba 150 Projects, and the Manitoba 150 Honoring Grants. Um, we do have another meeting scheduled on the 29th of October at 10.30 at the Westwood as well. So if you do have questions or um, comments or other areas where you want to contribute your thoughts and be a part of of what that looks like for the entire valley I encourage you to do so That's okay. uh, for me back to the G5 I guess you know we did have the the uh, a little bit more of a discussion or I don't <clears throat> want to say a debate but some there was some good discussion about uh, what the G5 might look like down the road and, and where we need to, to start to uh, maybe change or reformat um, we did talk about doctor recruitment. It's something that this council needs to have a discussion, perhaps one of our cow meetings, uh, to see if uh, <clears throat> we're interested in continuing on what that looks like. Uh, like Councillor uh, Morio said uh, at the meeting that we uh, was joined by newly elected uh, Bob Dillon from Sapatoa Cree Nation. We welcomed him and also Francis Chartrand, the Vice President of Northwest Meetings Council. And, uh, both of them I had a chance to visit afterwards, or actually before and afterwards, and had some good discussion. Both want to continue to be a part of that, and maybe a little bit more uh, to be uh, part of the process of moving forward. So hopefully we'll see more of uh, uh, their, con their other people that come from Sapatoyak and, and uh, West East First Nations as well. Um, <clears throat> 
Manitoba 150, I did have a chance to go there. There's, like it was already mentioned already, some really good discussion there of what, uh, you know, I didn't realize that they had the big planning going on with the museum for uh, next May and all that, the last railroad uh, spike, I guess what it was. So that'll be pretty interesting and, and how they can tie it all together. So there definitely needs to be more input uh, from all our municipalities and hopefully they, they attend that next meeting. And it's something that this council again is gonna have to talk about if there's gonna be anything that we're gonna beef up as far as what we're gonna to wanna to contribute something to, to uh, celebrate 150. Uh, because I believe that we talked about that uh, deadline for that. It's going to be around the November the 12th. <clears throat> so that's one that's going to be uh, coming up pretty quick. I was supposed to have a meeting with um, Francis Chartrand today, but unfortunately because of the storm down south, she had other things that she had to attend to. So we'll be rescheduling that meeting uh, with her, but uh, I look forward to that as always. And, um, and speaking of down south, you know, they had some uh, pretty significant storm down there, more than we can probably imagine. And, and uh, you know, we sent out our thoughts to all those people that had to go through not only losing power, but, you know, damaging homes and vehicles and property and everything else. So hopefully the cleanup can continue on and get everybody to back to some normal lifestyle as well. So anyway, we'll uh, move on then. So 7.4, <clears throat> result of the CAO's report for September and October 2019 we received, moved by Councillor Antoni, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion, comments from the CAO. Uh, yeah, I missed something on there. Uh, we had the uh, grade six uh, class visit the council <clears throat> so that uh, we could uh, go through with them how municipal government works as compared to uh, provincial and federal government and uh, the kids really enjoyed it and hopefully in the future we can uh, make a little bit uh, bigger preparations to possibly have the mayor and some councillors here to uh, explain their part as well. <coughs> Absolutely. Oh, that's that's, that's cool. what I have. Okay. Comes from freezing. I just wonder what's cool. Equal. Okay, for the so all in French. <laughs> so you did. Further discussion? All in favor? Carried. 8.1. Do, do we need to have a resolution to offer as a replacement? Her? One recommendation out of the report is that we have that. So I think we should approve that. Uh, the resolution. Oh, see, it was report is asking. Yes, yes. See, yes. Yes. we should replace, and I and I we've had this discussion about how the process should work, and I, I strongly believe that we should have the council should approve the positions. And, and so since since I've taken that position and given this as a recommendation, it seems like a prudent recommendation. We seem to be on budget from our last financial reports. Then I think we should approve the hiring of this position, and then it's not our query. We just leave it to the CIO, he takes care of it. But we've approved that this position should be filled. So uh, I would move that if I'll second it. Okay, so you just add a breath. Do we even actually need a resolution on it? It's an existing position that's a in well, I just think it, 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 I, I will use government or multiple <coughs> during these agents. There's an approval authority to fill positions. So, in, in government is an NOVP, which goes to Treasury Board, and they routinely, you know, they do 500 a little bit of time, 500, 100 a little bit of time. But they approve it so that because there may be a situation where we don't think we should fill a position simply because we at that point don't have the money, for instance, or we are thinking about. There's a restructuring plan. So I think process is, I love this process. I love saying there's this vacancy, we need to fill it. Can we do it? Yes. And then there's nothing to do with us. Because I wouldn't know. Okay, could I ask, did, was there a mover a second already? Yeah, yeah. I moved to Ken Councillor um, Gloria Sackman for hiring of that position. 
in due course. I think the position should be the position description. Sort of one in the municipal office, whatever it is. Result of the sale be approved to fill the soon to be vacant clerk position within with the town town office. Moved by Councillor Gray, second by Councillor Delorier for the discussion. Councillor Latoni. I move that this be uh, moved to the in camera session section in terms of um, hiring this position. Just in regard in yeah, I will move for it to put in camera. So you want to debate this in time? I do, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so we'll leave that till after no we come on camera. I have no objection to having a discussion in camera before okay. we move. Council Delorey? I guess under what grounds does it need to be talked about in camera? It's not dealing with a sp specific person. It's either we're looking to hire it or not. Mm. Under the rules for going in. In camera, I, I... I guess my grounds are is that um, if there was a possibility of restructuring that that position is a unionized position, and I don't think it should be discussed in public. Okay. So then we will uh, we'll look at that resolution when we come out of camera then. <clears throat> okay. 8.1. Whereas the Swan Valley District Recreation Commission believes that the current delivery model is no longer effective to meet the needs of the citizens within the valley. And whereas the Swan Valley District Recreation Commission is recommending an assessment of the current recreation delivery system and has proposed the development of a memorandum of understanding to guide the review. And whereas the Swan Valley District Recreation Commission is requesting all partners to participate in preparing the draft MOU. Therefore, be resolved that the Town of Swan River agreed to participate in the creation of an MOU which will define the scope of work and the development of a new integrated recreation delivery model. Moved by Councillor Gray, second by Councillor Tony. Discussion? Councillor Morial? Um, <clears throat> so at the G5, I've, I listened to the speech by Mr. Gustician, um, but I need more clarification or some schooling as to what their intended goal is, as to what their end result is. Because the funding for the province now comes within our global funding, and then it's up to us to determine or for the entire amounts to the commission. With, Councillor Gray, I, I can answer that, uh, and and I, I apologize for not being there because I, I, I'm not the vice chair of that commission. No, the the uh, recreation commission in its current form is pointless. There, there's, there's, it's actually um, worse than moribund. It's, it's actually harmful, <laughs> and so there's no purpose in us keeping the Swan Valley Recreation Commission. Unless we have an integrated program that says this is how we're going to deliver programming, recreational programming across the Swanwood Valley, or with whatever partners are going to be part of this, and so the idea of this is that we would um, look to start and uh, the the uh, resolution part's a little um, wordy in its own, but because really what we're talking about is 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 either we're going to go into a negotiation to see if we can have an integrated plan or we're going to wind up the Recreation Commission. Those are really the two options. 
And so each municipality is being asked, are you prepared to go into the discussion of a memorandum of understanding so that there would be an integrated recreation program where we would say we're going to look at the entire valley and the municipal <coughs> councils are going to see some authority for that, um, or we're going to essentially go into our own little silos. And those are the choices. So that's this is let's get in, let's be in on this because if we don't, here really the risk is this because we're going to be the major contributors one way or the other. We're, we're going to have to carry the ball entirely on our own or we're going to have the other municipalities with us. Um, and if they um, don't come along with this, then um, our recreation budget is going to be one of those things we talked about in terms of what is it we can really achieve. Right now our recreation budget is, and our recreation expectations from our citizens exceeds what we logically can have as a town of 4,200 people, and, and particularly given the demographics. And so it's important that we go through this process. Um, and if we don't, it, and quite candidly, if the town center says, no, we're not going to go through the process, there is no chance that the arm of Minnetonk Bozeman and the arm of Swan Valley West are going to go through the process. They may not anyway. And if they choose not to, then, then there is no integrated program, and we'll have to look at what we're going to do. But this is our chance to say, let's have an integrated program. So do we need to rename Benito and Bozeman and in Minnetonas and in Swan River? I mean, when every study says that you need one arena for 50,000 people, and we have 9,000. Um, do we, how do we run ball fields? How do we run other sports? What is the plan for the pool? All of that's an integrated plan. And, and either will have it or won't. So I strongly speak in favor of this simply in terms of a process. The, and, and I don't necessarily say that we're going to get to an integrated program because the integrated program has to work for everyone. And if it doesn't, then we're better to all go off on our own. Councilor Moria. So if I understand it, the, the resolution is just to enter it into the uh, partnership to draft an MOU. It's not even a partnership to draft. It's, it's to participate in the process of coming up with, is there is there an integrated plan to be had? If there is, that's fantastic. That's best for the entirety of the Valley. I don't even, my views on this are not any secret. I view unconditionally that these kind of big project things need to be Valley-wide, that we can't do them individually. But so that, it's just to go into the discussion. That's it. But then there will be a follow-up. No, but there'll be, there'll be an em a memorandum of understanding that will be agreed, and it might be it might not be about everything. It might be only about limited things, and then each council will either approve or not approve the memorandum of right. understanding. This is not what we're going to. This is not approving a memorandum of understanding in, in advance. It's yes, let's see what we can do, and recognize that implied in this is if we can't come to a memorandum of understanding. The, the Swan Valley Recreation Commission is dead. And quite candidly, if, if the town of Swan River isn't, isn't in, the, the Swan Valley Recreation Commission is dead. Okay, Councilor Tom. <clears throat> Just to add to that, Councilor Ray, because you weren't there, um, I do believe in this resolution as well, um, especially in part because there were one or more municipalities who debated whether or not they should be putting their funds to the rec to recreation as it was so that was a, um, a, a topic of discussion there so I just wanted to share that information thank you uh, like, I, that doesn't come as a tremendous surprise to me um, but that's up to them that's up to those individual municipalities that decide for themselves that comes in the so do we know as members of the rec the commission that uh, this same resolution is being put forward to the other municipalities or is it just uh, oh, this is our wording, I suspect, but each municipality has been asked whether they want to participate in the process of developing a memorandum of understanding. And their choice is, is as stark as the one I've just said. Either you're in the Recreation Commission and we work and we see whether it's going to be salvaged or you're effectively withdrawing now. Those are the choices. Yeah, and I think that was kind of the message from Mr. Eustachian that night, that he did say that all the, all the municipalities, you know, offer some support or to towards this process uh, by the end of October. Right, and because the, the drop-dead date for coming up with a memorandum of understanding is the end of December. Like, like this is not a, a, an ongoing, we're not going to go through a lengthy debate 
and back and forth and haggle. Either we're going to have an integrated recreational program or we're not. And then you all know my thoughts on if, if we're on our own, we're on our own, and we subsidize our own citizens, we don't subsidize citizens outside of the promise All right, for the discussion, all in favor? Let's carry. Yeah. 8.2, uh, I guess that's been, there is not a resolution there. I guess, Councilor Antonio, I don't know if you want to expand on that. We did have a discussion about that and the, what it means for uh, municipalities to participate in this and, and if, they're, if we can be part of that grant application because the funding, if it's all going to be kind of pooled together, it has to be done by a municipality, right? Um, to take full advantage of, of the opportunity, you have to have um, a balance sheet of greater than a million dollars, and that's municipalities um, who only have that threshold. So that's where the idea came to pull it all, pull everybody together, and apply for the maximum amount of funding, which is a 70 30 split um, in terms of having a budget of over a million dollars. So I think that's the way that in my opinion that we shouldn't in my opinion should operate this to get full advantage otherwise it's a 50 50 split so if we were to get everybody together and come up with the, the items and uh, present that um, granting application forward i think that's the best bet and the best bang for your dollar however having said that that was the discussion that happened at the westwood everybody there at that meeting got all of the information I'm just talking about the Celebrate one at this point in time. Everybody got together, knew about the events going on, including what the museum has planned, kind of tagging into that, and, and a whole pile of ideas. So those were the discussion. Everybody was to go back, and then we would have a meeting after we, um, after councils had a chance to discuss it as well. Um, so I would be in favor of us being a part of that, this council being a part of that 70-30 um, opportunity. Council Gray. Um, you said everyone, do, you don't mean all the municipalities. You mean the, the people who want to participate in this? Yes. It may be other municipalities, but... There, were, were, there was representation of citizens from those municipalities, but not necessarily council. Right, great. Yes. Because I, I'm can't be concerned with the idea of us getting together a, a grant application with the other municipalities before November the 12th. I, I, I don't know how that would work. It, it would be the application by each municipality, but and then they would be funding their own little projects for their certain areas. But the, the municipality being the catalyst to take advantage of the... Do, do we need the other municipalities to have the 73 school? No, we don't. Then I'm encouraging our municipality to do it for sure. Yeah, and they can do whatever they want. Absolutely. Knock themselves out. Um, have we figured out the events we want to? Because I thought we were restricted to two. Am I wrong? No, there's no restriction to okay. um, the amount of events. So I guess to, to get you out to speed on that one, the museum has an event that they've... Okay. That they've received funding for and it's may 31st i don't have my notes with me may 31st and then the discussion in the room was to have um, events leading up until that grand sunday that they've already had in the works were we not talking about making it the, the uh roundup we talked special it was at that uh, community meeting the community felt that they would rather have money spent for celebrations um, at a time where there is not necessarily people in the valley, and that was the the consensus of the of the people at that community or at that. The celebration people aren't in the valley. 
to, to encourage people to come. Oh, I see that they're not already here. That they're not already here for a reason. Okay. <laughs> we don't want anybody here for this whole reason. That seems unreasonable. unreasonable. Um, okay. Uh, I'm, I'm going to try, if I can get here for the point out, I'm going to come. There right. was further, strong feelings on that. There was further discussion to also have um, to save some money and plan something later on in the year in September. Um, the group there felt that they didn't want to do or didn't want to push a lot of celebrate celebratory activities throughout the summer. They would rather see it done in May and participate in what the um, museum was doing and then later on in September. And this is the voices of, of, of our community. Yeah, I, I think that it's important just to say that this is like preliminary stuff. This is just a lot of stuff that was just kind of thrown out there. It, there needs to be a little bit more input from other people. There, we, we had a fairly small group there. And if we want, if we're talking about the town of Swan or we're talking about the whole valley, because there was a discussion about that as well, and what it means, you know, bringing, you know, all cultures and everything together, you know, what this means as far as what, Manitoba 150. But th there's nothing cast in stone as what it looks like. There's just been a lot of talk about what we might be moving towards, you know, and, and uh, that's why it's important to have that next meeting. Uh, you said that was going to be on October the 29th because there is a, that um, November 12th deadline for celebrate uh, Magical 150. Councilor Freeze. Did you want to respond? No, no, it's fine. Did no, no. <clears throat> you see me? No, go ahead. Yeah. No, I just wanted to bring up the movie thing that was part of that, which is one of the other things that somebody talked about is. Um, movie weekends, using the park, the hill, and... Yeah. I don't, Mr. Crowell, do you want to add something? Because you were there, and it, it just, you know... Do you want to see you guys remember? Okay, good. That's Councilor DeLorean and then Councilor Morial. So just so I have this straight in my head, we're, we're going to apply for it on behalf of these other entities so that we can get the 70-30 split because on their own they can only get a 50-50 split. Yeah. So they will, the 30% the will still be coming from them. That's right. Okay. Because more yeah. STEM. Well, so the museum, the exercise, the, the other entities. I don't, I don't know who these entities are, but the other community entities that don't have balance sheets of a million dollars. That's correct. Who, I don't know who you're pointing at. Us. <coughs> Who's us? We'll right. probably be the 30%. The town? Part of it. Part okay. of it. Okay, for, for our own yeah. functions, yes, but there's other groups as well that are going to be included in that. Yes, okay. Just understand what we're doing. And and you know what? Like, sorry, Councilor Memorial, but it's I think it's important if, if there's questions or if you don't quite understand this, if you can attend it, come on the October the 29th. Yeah. Uh, Council Memorial. So I think before this council can actually vote on what we're supporting, I think we need to have a list of what is being proposed, not just yeah, who all the applicants like, are and how much and they're in for. for. Yeah, and how much, what they're, like, a project details, not just bid on the wall and find out what's there. Needed, like, I would assume after the 29th, um, we should be able to have a receipt of a detailed list of what the yeah. project is, the dates are, which committee's spearheading it, um, those types of things before we can make an educated decision on Yeah, and, and 8.2 is not necessarily there for uh, uh, a resolution to look at funding right now. It's more or less to get it on the table for us to discuss it and be, pre be prepared for October the 29th because we will be looking at something probably for our first meeting in November. Councilor, Mr. Crowley. Uh, yeah, that, that's why Patty didn't put a resolution on there. This this was her section here, and uh, she said she purposely didn't put she, All she wanted was council to discuss it to see see how it's going to go forward. Right. Council Dory. Uh, council Peters first. Well, I just endorse the same idea. Like, I, I, I really do think we want to know what it is we're doing and well, for sure. how it's coordinated. Um, I, I also, yeah. I just double checked because I wasn't sure. I know to be right, but you'll everybody recall that the Manitoba 150 is actually July 15th, right? That's the actual date that we joined the Federation, July 15th, 1870. So I, I just make that point. I think that's the thing that Lori's ahead of you, and then you should. So is it the 29th in the day or in the evening? 10 30 in the morning. 
can stop you in yeah. council. Uh, someone said at the thing the other day, did they not say it was May something? That's what I thought was I heard, too. Birthday? No. I, I heard that. But. I heard it, too, so they were wrong, because I believe David. <laughs> I mean, I, that's what I, I thought it was the middle of July, and I just couldn't remember the date. And, and for me, it was me. The other date I would choose, of course, would be um, you know, something involving the reality. It was the driving force between for Manitoba to become a So there are a lot of milestones there. But I, I won't belabor that here. It's not the appropriate forum. But July 15th was the day we acted the Manitoba Act was actually enacted. Council and Tony. So just to be clear, um, and just to, for the better understanding of our municipality, we're willing to um, look at that 70-30 split once we get, once we have numbers together by other organizations. I guess the big question is, is that, that um, everybody or the people participating in it and the granting application um, spearheaded by Patty and, and with the Chamber of Commerce with Stacy was that if there was um, the participation from our municipality for that. So by the sound of it, I think that there is, not saying that we're committing to money, but that we want to be a part of that. Councilor Grain, the Councilor Delore. I thought we were agreeing to two things. One was we would be the conduit for applications so that it was 70-30. And so we've got an accounting piece and so on to worry about. And the second is that there was a caveat that said that we want to have some input onto whether or not we're going to send those applications. That we're not just going to take any application and say, okay, we'll, we'll funnel it through. That we're, we actually are going to have some, some require some cogency in, in what we're going to do. Right? So those are the only two things that I, I thought that's what we were approving. And then we'll move to the October 29th date and so on, but that's going to be the we're going to be the conduit only, and uh, um, except for our own things, um, we're not going to commit to funding, and we, we want some cogency. So that, that for instance, um, I, I just I can't think of something, but if something really off the wall came off, you know, somebody off the wall comes in and says, "Well, I've made an application for a hundred thousand dollars for Manitoba 150 to you know have a, a huge." You know, tree burning in, in Legion Park, uh, we're not saying yes, we're just saying uh, we'll, we may or may not endorse individual projects. Is, is there a maximum that we can, that we would be, like is there a maximum you can apply for? It's a hundred thousand dollars, so seven. In total? In total. That we, that the cross puts Yes. So essentially, it could be a hundred thousand dollars from every municipality. Mm -hmm. So a hundred thousand to or seven seventy thousand to each municipality, and then the municipality has to come up with thirty thousand. I don't know. You're going to say the same as me, but I think that's yeah. not guaranteed because I have to go through that process. I, that, I, I did the uh, per capita breakdown, and it comes to about fifty-four thousand for our town. I mean, if if a bean counter in Winnipeg is looking at the numbers, I. If I was that bean counter, I wouldn't give any more than fifty-four thousand to the town because you got to short somewhere else right. to do that. There's there's an amount <laughs> per person plus a total maximum of hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Okay, okay. Council Delore. Okay. The second part of it, um, I assume we'll, we'll include our Canada Day celebrations. We can try and put put that as a. I think that was going to be decided at the next meeting. And we usually put around four grand into Canada Day. That, that'd be nice if we could have about eleven grand. To we can still apply for the Canadian Heritage Grant, which is what we've always done. Yeah, but we can we could use this I money towards that. Too. Usually on that grant, it says. Oh, are you getting any other? Yeah. Oh yeah. Have you applied for any other grant? Oh, and yeah. if you do, then you get. You get that. No, no. Okay. okay. It can't can't go go towards that. Count some more. Just a quick search here. Uh, May 12th, 2020 is the 150th anniversary that Manitoba Act received royal assent. And July 15th is the 100th anniversary that the legislature opened up its doors. Oh. So they did say May. So I thought they did say May. Okay. Well, that's fair. Right. Okay. That's good. It's, it's good info. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we've, uh, we'll see how things on, on uh, <laughs> October the 29th goes. So, so, do we need a resolution in terms of what Councillor Gray said? 
or not at this I, I think we've given a direction and, and Patty and we'll come back with something we want. Just so that everyone's clear though, our total that we're going to spend, that's going to be spent in the community, is somewhere around $80,000 if you want to keep the 70 30 split. Um, because 70, if it was 70, 35, it was 2 to 1, um, that would be 27000 from 54. So we should get our mind around we have about $80,000 to spend. Not a lot more. Anything more, please. Councillor Deloria. Just to clarify even further, the accuracy grew on sent in May, but kind of didn't officially join till July July 15th. That's when it went into effect. I, I don't think you need to get it the data on that. <laughs> well, John, I, 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 I'm sorry. I can't be spreading lies. <laughs> okay. can't be spreading All lies. All right. Well, th thanks for the clarification, uh, Councillor Freeze. I didn't understand what you just said. If you want to keep it 70 30 split, and assuming that somebody in Winnipeg presumably is going to say, you have a per capita amount that you can get, and it, it's it's whatever it is. It's it's obviously about twelve dollars a person, or thirteen dollars a person. So, yeah, thirteen dollars a person. So they will already know that the maximum for Manitoba for Swan River, because they'll run that number times the census and they'll spread it out. That's how they came up with the number in the first place. They will know that our maximum that they're going to give us is somewhere around fifty-four thousand dollars, and we may get lucky and get sixty. Or something like that. Somebody may have not be using the full amount, whatever. But for our purposes, for planning purposes, we should get our mind around the fact that we, if you want 70 30 split, if you want a 50 50, 50, 50 split, we can spend anything you want. You can, if you want a 20 80 split, we can spend a lot more money. But if it's a 70 30 split, you want, we have about $80,000 in total. So when somebody like the museum says, well, we're going to spend 40000 and therefore they want 70000 or 70% of that back then we only have 40000 for everything else. So so when we're in the meeting, you need, we need to be <coughs> conscious of that and say to people, well, I'm not so sure we're going to be doing that. Keep things. Okay. Because, because I think it's important to, that's why it needs to be integrated. So you, so we're not, we don't say, oh yeah, that's a great idea, and front load something, and then say, oh, well, we've got this other great idea, but we can't even do it unless we spend all of our own money. Right. All right. Good discussion and uh, some history lessons at the same time. Yes, you do. Oh, Mr. God, I thought it was great, but then, anyway, whatever. It's all good. Yeah. 8.3. So, whereas Section 326 of the Municipal Act provides that a municipality may impose supplementary taxes upon receipt of assessment alter alterations from the Manitoba Assessment Services, therefore, be it resolved that the assessment alterations made by Manitoba Assessment Services. October the 2nd and 8, 2019, be made to the 2019 property and business role, tax rolls uh, with the resulting increases totaling $1,923.13. I had to double check to make sure mine wasn't on there. <laughs> Mine's going to be coming up soon. Moved by Councillor Gray, second by Councillor Wintoni. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 8.4. Resolved that the Council of Town of Swan River endorsed the efforts to raise money and apply for grants to build a new concession building and the Legion Park. The, the secondary part that they asked us for was that if they are able to raise all of the capital money that we would assume operational responsibility for. Um, I'm just, I, I just note that that's what their, their ask was. I, I was really building it uh, toward uh, Councillor Wintoni's sort of initial suggestion was that uh, we, we really just back their efforts at this point. I can, I can, I, I, more I, I think, I, I think, you know, I, I hate doing things blind without knowing what the costs are. I agree with that. But, but the reality is what they really want us to say is that if they get the capital, because the worst possible scenario, we just went through this a year ago, a year and a half ago, the council approved somebody raising capital. They raised all the capital, and then we went through this process of saying, no, we're not going to take over operation of it. And, and it was a nightmare. And so for me, I, I'd like us, assume, based on what they've said, which is you know, not a big change in hydro, 
um, some maintenance, which we would do anyway, insurance. Uh, and some insurance, which it's a building, uh, of course we're going to insure it. I think we should agree to cover those three areas of cost, to take over operation and cover those three areas of cost as part of it, so that they are tiered that we committed to that, but not to any capital piece, because I, I have strong feelings on the capital piece too as well. So you want to have a whereas in there? Well, it, it doesn't matter. It can, it can just add after Legion Park and that the town of Swan River commits to um, having, uh, to operating the facility if all of the capital is raised externally. So, because I, I think that's what they really wanted. This time, that's what they're hoping to hear from us. Just in, just in regards to that, if, if all of the capital is raised, raised externally I, I think they were if they're falling short I think they were wanting no, no, I, I'm, I'm not prepared to, I, I'm only prepared to agree that if they raise the 65 or 70 thousand dollars that will operate uh, I have when we get to the budget we can talk about but if they for instance assume it's thirty thousand dollars they need from us I, I will have if, if you guys could read what I have there oh maybe. sorry you uh, <clears throat> uh, because Yeah, and, and I like, uh, I'll read that and then <clears throat> we can, we can, uh, I don't know. So resolve that the Council of the Child Sorter endorse, endorse the efforts to raise money and apply for grants to build a new concession building in the Legion Park and further that the Town of Swanter will assume operations, maintenance, and insurance once the building is built. Sure. Moved by Councillor Delores, second by Councillor Wintoni. And I, and I guess further to this that, you know, down the road, once we hear a little bit more, then if there is discussion about monies, whatever, from the, from the community, then we can have that debate at that time. Right. Okay? Any discussion? All in favor? Comes no, favor. All in favor? <laughs> All in favor? It's carried. I don't want to prejudge it, but I, I have to say, unless it's a quite a small amount, I'm not likely to be voting in favor of a large capital amount for it. Result that the sponsorship and advertising policy be approved. Moved by Councillor Gray, second by Councillor Morio. Discussion? You see the policy there? That's fine. Any further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> Dude, uh, Thank you, Mr. Kroll, for doing that. Result that the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General checks number 25092 to number 25173 for a total of 307,000 Payroll accounts checks number 4534 to number 4539 for a total of $100,000, $177.10. Payroll accounts check number 4540 to number 4544. For a total of nine thousand six hundred ninety-five and fifteen cents, moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Wintoni. Discussion, Councillor Wintoni. Uh, I guess it's possibly a question for Mr. Poole, but just in regards to check number two five one four seven, cut overgrowth on edges of ditches to Lou McClure. Does anybody know where those ditches were? Where? Uh, uh, usually does by the by like where you know specialties all, all oh, those are just there. Okay. Actually I think it's even further it's all back to almost uh extra cruise, isn't it? It's no real ditch there, but he does the trimming along there. Mm -hmm. I think. That's my recollection. I believe you're right. Okay. Any other questions? All in favor? It's carried. Result that pursuit of those section 152.3 of the municipal act. Council go to committee and close the meeting to the public. We have the personnel matters plus the other item of standing of, uh, of the clerk. Um, so uh, moved by Councillor <clears throat> Gray, second by Councillor Friesen. All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> Resolved that the CAO be approved to fill the soon-to-be-vacant 
Kirk position with the town office. Moved by Councillor Gray, second by Councillor Delorier. Discussion, all in favor? It's carried, sorry. <clears throat> and did you draft the other two resolutions for tonight or are we doing them November? Yeah. November. 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 Good. For November. Yeah, no, I, I just want, if you drafted them, I was gonna have to open up my thing again, but I, I my preference is November. So resolve that this regular meeting of council now be adjourned. Moved by Councillor Matoni, second by Councillor Friesen. All in favor? It's carried. Thank you.